Welcome back. This is Chris, my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome back. Uh, day today is August 25th, mm -hmm. year of our Savior, 2018. And the title of this video is Kingdom of Darkness, Part 3. Kingdom of Darkness, Part 3. Now, uh, and the reason why we, we're talking about Kingdom of Darkness is because there's a lot going on, folks. And sometimes it's just really hard for uh, some of the topics we're talking about. It's just like, well, why, why... Why this great deception of heliocentrism, man? How can, how can this be such the greatest lie ever? How could NASA and, and be lying and the Vatican and, and the, the Jesuit priest and all of this stuff? And then when you understand we're dealing with a hierarchy, we're dealing with principalities, powers of darkness, right? We're dealing that this is Satan's kingdom, that Satan is what? <clears throat> is he not the prince of the power of the air? Mm-hmm. As mentioned in Ephesians 2 verse 2 now if you have a prince you have a principality now if you have a principality if Satan is the prince of the power of the air if he's the God of this world then would he counterfeit God's cosmology you yep. Ephesians 2 2 yes wherein in time past ye walk according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So we have a spirit working in the children of disobedience. There's a spiritual battle going on. And if I was prince of the power of error, if I was Lucifer, Satan, I would definitely counterfeit God's cosmology. Because mm -hmm. remember, no matter what, Satan always has a counterfeit. Well, are you saying that this has been happening over hundreds of years? Yes, Satan's a long-range planner. As we yes. read in the, the introduction to Kingdoms of Darkness, what do you think he was doing in heaven? Same thing he's doing on earth. Very long-range, the gradualism. And so that's very important to understand to know our enemy, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So we're, we are on... Um, we are prone to think of Satan's uh, emissaries as living only in the disembodied state hovering around in space and whispering evil things into our ears. It is true. There are literally billions of evil spirits living in the atmosphere, right? The air sphere, the celestial sphere, the right. dome or the firmament uh, connected to the earth, according to the word of God, uh, around the earth, tempting and deceiving, harassing and vexing mankind. Yes, but the devils that we need most to be on the alert for are those who are trying to influence us through man. This is where Satan, through his de demonic host, does his great damage in leading men to ruin. Though we do not wish to minimize the need for guarding our minds against the enemy that whispers in our ears, we must also be on the alert against him deceiving us through man. Deceiving us through man, through man-made religions, folks. All these deceptions. That's why we expose heliocentrism, because it's a doctrine of devils. Okay? It's not biblical. And it leads people away. It creates, mm -hmm. it creates atheism. Now, as a Christian, do I, want, do I want the Word of God or some deception linked to the Word of God that is can damn souls to hell? <laughs> no, I don't. No. I would rather just Jesus Christ is the truth. We worship Him in spirit and truth. So if you want to believe the Word of God, believe it. If you don't, don't. But don't stand in between, ladies and gentlemen. We're fighting a war. If you want to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, as Joshua says, stand. If you don't, don't. All right? So, though, as we move forward, we see a lot of stuff going on through deception. In the name of science, in the name of religion, following pastors, whatever my pastor says. So Satan and his hosts, greatest work on deception and evil are accomplished as they project themselves through the life and personality of the person they dwell in. So we also have infusion into the body, right? Because what happened in the worldwide flood is you had the angels coming down, or you can call them stars, maybe that might be a good reference as well. What happened? They came down and they corrupted sexually everything. Yeah. Mankind, animals, fish, you name it. Just absolute disgustingness. Yep. 
And so God looked down and to save mankind, he brought a worldwide flood. And so there are a whole lot of disembodied spirits going on. And that's the purpose of religion. That's the purpose of the whole thing. I held up a book called Entity. Now, through religious corporations, we have a corporation. Comes from the Latin corpus. It also forms the word corpse. All right? So then you're dealing with corporation, corpse, core, incorporate, and that has two meanings. Number one, it means to um, make a lot of money, which corporations do, and it means to take a whole bunch of people and turn them into one individual, and then embodiment, which means to hand them over to an entity, to a spirit. That's the purpose of a corporation, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. You can verify that right in the English language. Yeah. Oh. Right? So handing them over to entities, and that's the whole thing of a, a person or personify. Uh, this whole thing of, oh gosh, and that's what these entities want to do. They need a host. They need something to fill in. So you're either going to be possessed by the Holy Spirit, as mentioned in Genesis 1 verse 2, or unholy spirits. The choice is yours. And even when we're saved, folks, there's, there's, there's thoughts and bad things that are in our mind, ladies and gentlemen, due to our past, what we've done in the past, the patterns that we've done. So I don't want you to think that there's no hope because when you're saved, and let's say you are still struggling of issues, I don't want you to think that, well, I'm not a Christian or I've lost my salvation. If you're saved, you can never lose it, folks. Right. But the whole thing is to be able to uh, uh, con confess your faults, uh, talk to people that love you, that are Christians, and deliverance, and let the power of Jesus Christ make changes in your life. All right? We're to confess our sins to God, confess our faults one to another. All right, so this is what we see. Satan and his host's greatest work on, on earth of uh, deception and evil are accomplished as they project themselves through the life and personality of the person they indwell. Their evil spirit nature is actually imparted or ministered in this manner. Even as God's spirit is ministered to man through human vessels, so is the spirit of lawlessness ministered to man through human vessels as word of God is the vehicle or means through which God enters a human life, Satan's word, the lie, is the means used to enter and destroy man. So remember that Jesus is spirit and truth. And we're saved through what? We're saved through truth, right? Because Jesus is the truth. He is the light. When you're dealing with Satanism, it's all about taking in the light, the Illuminati, right? The enlightenment, the illumination. Well, that's day four light, but that's not day one light. Day one light, Genesis 1 verse 3, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the only way. You have a choice. So when we see that Adam fell, he disobeyed God, he forfeited his birthright through sin. This resulted in spiritual death first, followed by physical death. So we had Adam that was physically alive, but spiritually dead. And so the descendants of Adam were born physically alive, but spiritually dead, Ephesians 2, 1 through 2. The entire, uh, the entire mankind, or Adam kind, came under the power of Satan, who usurped the dominion mandate given to Adam. Mankind, separated from God, sought to make a name for themselves by becoming their own gods. Their life became characterized with pride, self-exaltation, self and independence from God, right? Self-improvement, right? Mankind became estranged from the real father, the creator, through sin. Being estranged, the children of man inherited a degenerate nature with their mind continually brainwashed by the father of lies, Satan. Over a period of time, lies became truth, evil became good, and through indoctrination, the children of light became deceived. So understand, ladies and gentlemen, that we all have deceived, right? Romans 3, verse 23. We've all have been deceived. All right, so salvation is a free gift. So if you haven't been saved, ladies and gentlemen, right now, I pray that you'll follow along, and I pray that you'll accept the free gift. Uh, for all, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. So you look and you go, wow, this person over here, 
man, they, they're very, very disciplined. Maybe they don't drink, maybe they don't drink coffee, maybe they don't drink sweets, maybe they're um, very moral, maybe they're very, they never say a curse word, they're doing all this stuff. I mean, you look over and go, gosh, I'm a horrible person compared to that person. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all have sinned. Mm -hmm. Even that person that you're looking at, He's cheating on his taxes or, or whatever, we all have sinned. Yeah, and all of us deserve death. But because of the free gift, that's why we talk about this wonderful book. Over 300 prophecies, first mentioned first prophecies, Genesis 3.15, about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he came and died on the cross, and his blood was shed once, there was made by necessity a change in the law, an activation in the law. And now we're under the New Testament. Right. And it used to be uh, in tents, and the altar was in a tent. Now our bodies are God's temple. And the altar, I don't know, it's in this body. Maybe it's our heart, I don't know. But now we are eternally connected with the Lord Jesus Christ, even when we sin. In Romans 5, 8 says, uh, But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joyed in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, or reconciliation. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Correct. That's the New Testament. So, yeah. as is written, Romans 3.10, as is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So God's remedy for sin, right? Well, you got to work really hard. No, no, no. It says, Romans 6, verse 23, says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Chapter of Romans 5, 15, But not at, as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Yes, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Yes, according to the law and the prophets, over 300 prophecies of Jesus Christ from Genesis to Malachi. And verse 4 says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Right? So God loves you. That's right. Yes, he does. Revelation 3, verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him. Romans 6, 14, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. Grace. New Testament, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New Testament. Romans 10, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Really? So we could call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, accept the free gift, and if you've done that, congratulations, That's you're right. saved. Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 8, I think you said this, but God commendeth his love towards us, that in that while we were yet sinners, God Christ died for us. Yeah. So there's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. It is a free gift, folks. And so either you take something or you don't. There is no trying. Either you accept the free gift or you do not. Right. So, but as a Christian, we're going to need spiritual armor, right? Because even though we're saved, right? Doesn't it say in Ephesians uh, 6, it says, put on the armor of God. And truth is a part of the armor of God. 
meditating upon the Word of God, believing what Jesus Christ is saying, walking with Him daily. Because a lot of times people go, oh, I'm saved, but then I want to walk by myself, and then you get nailed, and then you're trying to fix it by yourself. Yeah. You need the power of Jesus Christ, and you need Him daily because you are going to fall. You're going to mess up and daily. Ephesians 6.13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. Therefore, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You notice that this is recommendations for believers. This is not for non-believers, folks. This is recommendation for believers. So putting on the armor is mean you have full ar armored gear on. It's like, you know, you got your, you know, you're going to war, you got Kevlar helmet, you got your, your um, metal plates in the front and the mm -hmm. back, you got your firearm, you got you know, your, uh, your magazines, you got grenade, you got all this gear, you got your, your comms, you got your helmet, you got all of these things, Oops. and then you got the sword, right, mm -hmm. which, is, which is your weapon. Um, and a lot of Christians do not have the sword of God. They got Roman Catholic watered down Bible. So pick, get into, get your sword. Instead yeah. of a, a AK-47, they've got a squirt gun. You know. Right, right. They do. They got you know, something watered down. Equipment. But this is recommendation Four because we're battling days. as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So to think that once you're saved, you're not going to have any temptation. You're not going to have any problems. Satan's not going to mess with you. You're not going to fall. A lot of times you're more of a target now because if you have an influence over people, all he has to do is feed you a lie, kind of like what Peter was doing. You know, he preaches the Word of God, and Jesus is like, man, awesome. And then within a moment, he's preaching Satanism. Just like that. And that's what can happen. You can have a pastor talking about the truth, and then next moment, he's preaching Satanism because he's deceived. We're going to Judas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, got deceived. Got deceived. So let's talk about confessing. Uh, Romans 10, verse 9, that, that in thou, that is thou shalt confess thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now you are spiritually alive in Jesus Christ. And even when you fall, so that's why we want a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ daily, folks, because I don't care who you are, uh, and that's why it's very important, because Satan's going to say, you're not a Christian, or you're this, you're that, and we have a tendency to sabotage ourselves, right? Or maybe it's just me, right? We have a tendency to sabotage ourselves. So remember that we are God's co-worker. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. We are God or Jesus Christ's workmanship, right? Uh, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengtheneth us, right? Yes. Or should we sit in a circle and say, I'm powerless? No. No, we should say we can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengtheneth me. Jesus, I need you. Help me, Jesus. Help me right now. I need you, Lord Jesus. Right now, in the name of the power and the glory of Jesus Christ, let's move forward. So, 1 uh, John 5, verse 13 says, These things have I written unto you, that ye believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The name of the Son of God is Jesus Christ, if you speak the English language, not Hebrew Yiddish, ladies and gentlemen. John 20, verse 31. But these things are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through His name. Christians are forgiven through Jesus Christ. He died in our place. We are a new creature now. Right. We still have the old patterns uh, in our body. So now we have to start setting new patterns. Right. And that's why if you have a church, that's great. 
uh, to you uh, relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ you know vertically and then you have a horizontal relationship with each other but ladies and gentlemen don't make it some confessional do yeah, yeah don't make it like I'm confessing every intimate sin you're to confess your sin to your high priest your high king and your high prophet who's that that's mm -hmm. Jesus Christ he's your mediator he's the one that's going to forgive your sins not a priest or a pope or correct I mean because that is through that aspect and I think that nothing I think that the the so recovery 12-step program is nothing more than a, an extended confessional move that's not very popular but remember that this organization the entity right that's through the papacy has used intelligence they they yeah. They've written intelligence, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, the CIA and the OSS and man, that, that was amazing. It's like Scientology got caught doing it, but they're, yeah, they're the progenitors. Yes, yeah, Sci the Scientology, but but they're nothing, folks. They're little elementary school little children, yeah. and it's like, well, they're pretty advanced, yeah, compared to the man of sin, the son of perdition. Mm -hmm. Been going on for a very long time through the confessional book. Yeah. So even though good is happening, even though people are working through their problems, I'm not here to be insensitive about it. If it works for you, who am I to say? But all we're here to say is we're here to preach the truth, preach the Word of God. And so why don't we have, dealing with, instead of having some 12-step program, why don't we deal with Scripture, all right, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and then let's find out what's going on and let's have some deliverance, all right? Amen. Through the power of Jesus Christ. Not trying to argue with the demons and yeah. find out what names they are. It's like, uh, I'm going to talk to a lying spirit and they're going to tell me the <laughs> truth, right? No, you don't need to know. Make I don't need to know how many names. Well, they tell you some truth to, to lead you off the path. Right, right. They want you to dialogue. You don't have to dialogue with them. Mm -hmm. Cast them out. And this is not exorcism either, ladies and gentlemen. That's through the man of sin, the son of perdition. That's very dangerous. All right? Because you have always, you have someone possessed with a demonic spirit. I mean, you look in the New Testament. What was Jesus doing? He was casting out these spirits, right? And people that were diseased got healed. But some of them, man, I was like, Paul I know and Peter I know but I don't know you and they right. just they beat these guys up and they ran for their lives naked and bruised beaten up so you can you can be trying to do some seance circle using the pentacle pentagram and this 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 body is possessed with an entity embodiment and it it wheels around and smacks you I mean it could yeah. cave in your ribs, cause your lungs to collapse. I mean, you're talking about a force that you do not want to try to battle between good and evil. Like, oh yeah, we're going to battle back and forth. No, no, you. We want to bring in the mighty, the mighty power that's already conquered it yeah. all. Because they go. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, because we are now, we've become purchased. Christians are forgiven by Jesus Christ. We are now saints. He died in our place. We became purchased by the blood of the Lamb one time. That's what. We are now children of God. Colossians 3, 3 through 4. 1 John 3, 1 through 3 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God and daughters of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it kneweth him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear that we shall be, but we shall. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. We were sinners, but now have become saints or children of God. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Therefore the old man died. Romans 6, verse 6. And your new self is united with Christ in Galatians 2, verse 20. And that's why we need, as Christians now, we're in the army of God. So let's get a uniform on, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start getting some weapons. Let's start ready to battle against the kingdoms of darkness. Right. As a child of God, you need to be aware and alert to Satan's schemes in order to avoid being deceived or manipulated. Remember, dealing in the light. 
That's why it's very important for us to understand God's, God's cosmology. Because we, when you understand earthly things, we can understand spiritual things. Right. But how can we understand spiritual things if we don't understand earthly things? True. How can we understand the Son of God if we think that it's a Son of the Gods? Oh, there's many suns out there, mm -hmm. and a sun is a star. Well, that's a lie, folks. Do you believe a lying spirit, or do you believe the truth? Because to worship God, even though you're saved, ladies and gentlemen, you can still be deceived. And God says, I want you to come to me and realize to worship me, I want you to worship me in spirit and in truth. And there's only the sun, the moon, and the stars. Don't follow the wandering stars, ladies and gentlemen. Don't follow the wandering stars or planets. All right, so we need, God clearly warns us that the serpent can harm, destroy, even kill us through ignorance and lack of knowledge. Talk about a physical body. We can be killed. We can be destroyed. Yes, but there is power and protection. Uh, before we, uh, we usually, before we start uh, these sermons, uh, these uh, lessons, we do a prayer. And Stephen prayed the 91st Psalm. Great. Want some spiritual armor, spiritual protection. If you're feeling uh, frightened or scared, uh, read the 91st Psalm. That's right. Uh, read the, the 23rd Psalm, you know. Uh, but the 91st Psalm is great. So, and it's not that by you doing, uh, it's not by what you do, but by what He has done for us. And through faith in Him, that's what it's about. And right? knowing, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in, in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Right, exactly. So we need to open, uh, we, need, we, are, we need to be open to deception, be aware of deception and vulnerability to Christ's snares. So in order to defend ourselves against Lucifer, it's imperative that we take on the spiritual armor of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on His name, take up the sword of the Spirit. God bless you.